stretching table. Okay. And it's made out of plaster, and as you and it provides a a firm and porous surface um, on which to knead, knead the clay. Okay. okay. And you're going to use your hands to move the clay like this. You don't want to stretch it forward and turn it into a pancake. Okay. You're going to basically just use your hands, sort of tap it to the shape of picture number one, two. Step number two there, and all that's doing is sort of preliminarily centering the clay. Try to just roughly center it where you think the center is on the wheel. Uh, okay, so now we're going to slap center with dry hands. Okay. You're lightly putting it down onto the wheel, and then with the wheel moving pretty slowly, you're just going to slap it uh, in about the same amount of pressure that you would use when you clap, like this. You don't want to create creases. You want it to wind up smooth, so anytime you start to feel that you're creating creases, you want to let up on your pressure. And on the very bottom where that clay is uh, touching the wheel head, just kind of tack it down, just a couple rotations to make sure that that bottom is attached to the wheel head, because we're going to be exerting a lot of inward pressure on here now when we don't want it to fly off of the wheel. All right? That's good. And now we're going to center the clay. So you're going to lean forward with braced elbows, leaning in toward that mound, leaning forward, and you're basically just going to push the mound forward. At, and at the same time, as if that's not, not enough to have to think about, you're going to actually use the back of your thumb here on your left hand and your right hand to push the mound down to contain the shape so that it retains that igloo shape. And I'm going to glide my fingers to where I feel like the center is, and I'm just going to start exerting downward pressure. My top hand is doing the pushing, and my bottom hand is doing the drilling. Keep coming. Try to keep your hand straight up and down because okay. you're using this is this is the tool that's stretching the wall. Okay. Right? So bring it keep toward Keep hand more flat. Okay. So when you're not teaching beginners like us, how fast does it take somebody to throw a pot like this or a bowl like this? Uh, maybe a couple, depends on who you are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, five minutes, ten minutes. Okay. I mean, our advanced instructor, Nancy McIntosh, who's been a potter, she was my instructor. Uh, she can do it in a couple minutes. Flat. Yeah. She's very quick. So now we're going to talk about what throwing is. Okay. Throwing is the term that throwing or pulling is usually what you hear people say when they talk about um, um, move, making the clay into an object, and we're okay. almost to that point. What, what makes the clay grow, and you'll see this in a minute, is the, the wheel pulling the clay in this direction, okay. and your hands over here in this lower right-hand quadrant exerting pressure at the base and coming up the wall, and basically creating a, a tension that creates a stretch, either upwards or outwards, depending on how your hands are, are moving. Okay. Okay, so it's a controlled stretch. And that's the reason why you want to make sure that your hands are always kind of in this place, maybe between 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock. Uh, down at the bottom of the pot, right where it's at the wheel head, I create a little bevel down okay. at the bottom here, okay? And then, as I said, with my hands over here, right at about between 3 and 4 o'clock, I have my elbows braced and I make sure I have lots of lubrication on my clay, and I exert right, right at the base here. I have my two sets of, if, if the clay wasn't there, my hands would look like this. Okay. And they would exert a pressure just enough to trap this little bottom section of clay in between my fingertips, and then retain that, that pressure so that that clay is trapped between my fingers as I carry it up the wall. Okay. So I'm not actually stretching the whole wall, I'm actually carrying a little blob of clay from the bottom to the top, to the top. okay? So I'm exerting pressure down here at the base and squeezing, and now I'm traveling up the wall, okay? And I'm keeping that pressure on till I get almost up to the rim, and then I let off my pressure at the rim because I don't want to rip the rim off, release my pressure and pull away. So that's my first pull. Okay. And after every pull, 
then I use that same hand position that I just showed you to reset and strengthen the rim because I want the rim to be thick and strong until the very end. And so then as I squeeze, I keep that pressure up just enough to keep it trapped, but not so much that I'm gonna rip a hole in the wall. And again, I do my second pull. And I'm trying to go straight up and down so that I don't lose control of my shape. You made a pot. <laughs> I you seems I did. You did. I mean, <laughs> you know, if you were gonna continue to take classes, I would, you know, work with you to try to, I, yeah. to make it a more a little, bit, even a little less lumpy, thing. yeah. But, you know, definitely, you, you're not, you know, I, I think sometimes people have a certain trepidation about getting their hands into clay and, like, they think something bad is going to happen, but it's just clay, and if you mess it up, you know, you, you just get another thing of clay and you keep going, and I, you, you don't have that trepidation, you're, you're fearless. So Thanks. That's, that's a good trade. <laughs> it, it was fun. I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to get a chance to try it out.